Hello everyone. My name is T Hunter. For those who are joining me for the very first time, thank you so much for clicking on this video and deciding to watch some content by little old me. For those who are returning, thank you so much for coming back. If you have not already, please take some time to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Okay, so let's get into today's topic. I wanted to talk today about don't worry about the nitpickers. So one of my very vivid memories of a nitpicker actually happened in high school. One of my teachers had passed out a syllabus or an instruction set for an assignment. And as he's giving us the instructions and he's presenting the information to us, a student raised their hand and I'm thinking, oh, okay, you know, he's got a question already. Great, you know, maybe something's confusing or whatever. So when the teacher calls on the student, the student says, you spelled such and such word wrong. And I remember thinking, you interrupted this teacher's presentation in the middle of it to tell him he did something wrong. Something so minor as a misspelled word. And y'all, it wasn't such a terrible misspelling that when I looked at it, I had no clue like what word he was trying to spell. And I'm a person who's definitely a stickler for spelling and grammar. Ever since I was a kid, I loved being able to spell correctly because, well, that meant I got higher scores on my spelling tests. And I just really like spelling. But at the end of the day, I was a student. And it's not that students can't give teachers feedback, but it's the way that you present your feedback and your constructive criticism that can either come across as you being a nitpicker or you being someone who wants to offer genuine feedback, offer constructive criticism and support someone with growing in their skill set. Yeah, um, the way that I interpreted this experience, it wasn't the latter. I did not perceive the student as trying to help our teacher become a better educator at all. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't recall what the teacher's response was because honestly, I don't think he really gave one other than, okay. And then he continued with his presentation, continued with the lecture, continued with the instructions of the assignment, whatever it was. And looking back on it as an adult, I definitely admire that teacher's lack of a reaction. It's one thing to give a response and it's another thing to react when someone says or does something that's supposed to get a reaction out of you. So him being very cool, calm and collected and just continuing with his presentation sent the message of I'm in charge here. I'm still a good teacher. I'm human and I can make mistakes and I can pick up and keep moving forward even after those mistakes have been made. So I just want to encourage anyone out there who is struggling with this idea of you have to be perfect before you put anything out whether you are creative and you're doing music or you are into the performing arts visual arts whether it be photography or be film or even if you are writing a blog writing a book whatever it may be it's okay to make mistakes God is going to put people in your life that will help you grow. They will help you practice until you get better at whatever skill set it is that you are trying to practice. So don't worry if you have a few errors here and there. If we all waited until we were perfect before we decided to share whatever God-given gifts we have with the world, a lot of us would die with those talents inside of us. And that's a sad reality that that does happen. So don't worry about a few errors. Keep going. Now, there is a difference between nitpickers and those who want to offer constructive criticism, as I mentioned before. So let's not confuse those two types of individuals. I would say the major difference would be this. Say, for example, you have a friend who has identified that they're struggling with a certain skill set that perhaps you have mastered, or maybe you just have more experience with it. So it comes to you with a bit more ease than it does for them. You offer your support by, say, you're proofreading their blog, or if they are a YouTuber, 
um, you're helping to edit their videos or maybe in their social life. When they ask for it, you offer advice, sound advice to help them navigate a potentially triggering interaction, whether it be with another friend, a family member or whoever. And I would say that would be the difference between a nitpicker and someone who's trying to offer constructive criticism with the purpose of helping somebody grow. You're sharing an alternative perspective. You're sharing constructive criticism. You're sharing thoughts and reactions and giving this person like another window, another lens to look at their situation, to look at their responses. And hopefully you're doing it with the idea of, if I share this, this can help this person grow. If I share this, this person can be in a position to help somebody else grow. So you're not putting them down and lifting yourself up simply because you're better at this particular skill, whether it be writing, whether it be video editing, whether it be communication, whatever it is. You're sharing your wealth of knowledge based on your experiences. And make sure that you use that um, as a disclaimer or that you preface any advice of, this is just how I've experienced this situation or this is just how I've dealt with this type of situation in the past versus um, trying to come across as what you're saying is law. Because um, in my therapy background, one thing that I was taught was you do not offer advice. You do not just kind of steamroll your way into someone's treatment because once you're out of the picture, if all of the things that you've suggested are strictly that, your suggestions, as opposed to you collaborating with a client, once you're out of the picture, they can just stop doing whatever intervention, stop doing whatever suggestions that I've made because it wasn't their idea. I didn't have their buy-in. I didn't take time to ask them, well, what do you think about this if we take this process and we try to tackle it from this angle? Or we take this situation and we use this intervention. What do you think? Or what do you think will work best for you? Let me listen to what you believe will be best for your experience because you've been living your life, all of your life. I've only been in it for however long I've been assigned to your case. You're the expert of your situation. You're the expert of your experiences. What's going to work best for you? So I said all that to say, um, Offering constructive criticism to someone who's not in space to hear it, sometimes that could come across as you being a nitpicker. So we also need to read our audience and know, and even ask them, hey, I have some feedback for you, but are you open to it? Um, one thing that I really enjoyed from one of my favorite podcasts, The Love Hour with Melissa and Kevin Fredericks, Melissa said, sometimes it's best to preface these difficult topics with, okay, what I'm going to say might be difficult to hear. Are you in a space to hear some difficult feedback? So if the person tells you no, then you could have the best ideas, the best intentions, but if they're not in that space to receive your feedback, you could be doing more harm than good. And that's the difference between a nitpicker versus someone who wants to help someone grow. Um, they can read their audience and then also apply patience, delayed gratification, and just being able to just, you know, pump the brakes. Like, okay, you're not in a space to hear this criticism that I want to offer, so I'm not going to offer it right now because it won't be well received. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have for today. Um, if you like this video, feel free to leave me some feedback of your own in the comments. Share it with someone. Subscribe to my channel. Like this video. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day. Bye, guys.